I'm a mix of emotion when I think about preparing for the holidays. First, there is the food, and I love food, so there, I always look forward to that. But thinking back pre-minimalism days, there were so many things that I expected of myself that added a lot of unnecessary stress to the holidays. And either reducing those things or eliminating those things has made the holidays so much more enjoyable. Today I want to talk to you about four things to eliminate that are going to make a big difference in your life and reducing that holiday stress. First off, let's talk about decorations. Going minimal with my Christmas decorations happened purely by accident and it happened before we embraced minimalism. 2001, I was a single mom, I had three little boys, they were three, four, and five and we moved from Washington State to Montana. We lived in a small basement apartment and I was renting a small storage unit to keep things like the piano because I wasn't gonna move the piano in and out of apartment. I also kept the Christmas decor in that storage unit. In 2002, Brian and I got married and since we lived in a small basement apartment, there wasn't room to store all of his collections, so we took them to the storage unit. That was July. And then Christmas came and we headed to the storage unit to pull out the Christmas decor. But there was a problem. I hadn't considered the fact that come December we would need to access the Christmas decor. And so it was stacked all the way at the back of the storage unit at the very bottom. So between us and the Christmas decor was at least six feet of clutter. So we looked at it and we were like, I guess we're gonna figure out something different this year. We bought a string of lights for the Christmas tree, but everything else we decided to make. So we made a paper chain, we cut out a bunch of snowflakes and hung them with thread on the tree, and the tree looked beautiful. The boys loved doing it, so from that point on, we made that our tradition. We no longer have to pull out all the individual Christmas ornaments and carefully unpack everything. Now we sit around the table and we all cut snowflakes together. As the years went on, we found we got so much more joy and had fun with making the decor rather than storing so much of it. And these days, aside from the tree, it takes me about 10 minutes to decorate the house for Christmas. I have two boxes, I just pull them up from the basement, set everything out that I want out, which is a very small amount of different family items, and then I'm done and I can put the box away and when Christmas comes to a close and I want to put everything away, again, it takes less than 10 minutes to do all of that, which is a huge deal because before that, Christmas decorations, putting them up, taking them down, all of that was a major job. So as you go through your decorations this year, as you're pulling them out, only display the ones that you really love. And if you don't miss any of those other decorations, then just put these currently loved decorations back in a box and feel free to let go of the rest or wait a couple of years and give it time before you're firm and you say, yes, I'm ready to say goodbye to those decorations because these are the ones that I absolutely love and only having this amount makes the holidays easier for me. This video is made in collaboration with the Mega Motivation Playlist hosted by The Minimal Mom. This week we're focused on holidays. So if you're ready to simplify your holidays, decor, all these things that you do, be sure to check out the playlist. There will be more videos added throughout the week and I know it will be a great encouragement to you. I'll put the link to the playlist in the video description below. Crusty sourdough bread for our soups coming up. I've decided that's my new favorite is to have crusty bread and creamy soup. Although this one is a chocolate chocolate chip loaf. So that's not gonna go with the soup. The next thing to think about is expectations. If we think about all the times we've ever been disappointed, really what it boils down to is because our expectations weren't met, right? So this applies to every single one of us, what we expect of ourselves, how we expect our loved ones to respond when we give them gifts, what our children expect for gifts, what our community expects us to be involved in, all of that expectations 
all around. And I think it's important to address all the expectations and let people know exactly what they can expect. But let's talk for a minute about our kids. Please tell them what they can expect. Coming out of a difficult marriage and those really bad communication patterns, I decided that we weren't going to allow any kind of hinting in our home. So if you want something, you just have to say it, ask for it, let people know, say exactly what is on your mind. Because if you're eating a chocolate chip cookie and a child comes up and says, ooh, that looks good, I'm hungry, I would rather they just say, can I have a chocolate chip cookie too? And so that's how I talk through it with my little kids. And as they become teenagers, they're used to this frankness from me of me saying, this is what I expect of you. So they know exactly what my expectations are. And it works the other way around of what they can expect. So if we're reducing gifts this year, if we're decreasing the amount, or maybe we want to move into like a name drawing, gift exchange type thing, so we're not getting so many gifts for all these different people, but we can involve our children in those conversations, we can ask them their opinion, we can get ideas, and we can come to a conclusion and let them know this is exactly what you can expect. So if in the past you have given the kids lots of different gifts and you want to reduce that, just let them know, look, we're gonna do Christmas a little bit different this year. This year, instead of this many gifts or getting everything on your list, we're going to do it this way instead. Will they be upset? Maybe, like depends on the personality, but that's okay because we're teaching them valuable communication skills. And with teenagers, it helps to tell them exactly what you expect from them. So I would sit down with my calendar and plan out what day we're getting a Christmas tree, what day we're going to cut out snowflakes, what day we're going to make gingerbread houses, because those are the things, those are the traditions that we decided to keep in our family. And then I would let them know, like, hey, don't make plans with your friends on these days, try to get these days off work, whatever they have going on, these are the days that we're going to do these things. And then I would also let them know if I expected them to leave their phone at home or in their room or whatever expectations I have around technology during that time. And if you are a parent of teenagers, keep in mind that teenagers don't often want us to see how happy they are to be doing these things, but they most likely still want to do these things. So we can expect them to be there and we can expect them to not be on their phone, but we don't need to expect them to be happy about it or show how much they enjoy it or interact a whole lot. Whatever your teenager has going on, it can be enough that they're there. And now that I have adult kids looking back at it, they don't remember how grumpy they were during those times. They just remember how wonderful those times were. The next thing to think about is traditions. Tradition, tradition, tradition. I personally love traditions. I love that our family has traditions, and I think that traditions are so important. They give us that sense of belonging, of identifying as part of this family. But there are a lot of things that I had to cut out because they were just things that I did for the sake of tradition, not because they added value to my life. And in fact, they didn't just not add value, they took away value from my life. Some things that I had to let go of were making popcorn balls and homemade candy, sending Christmas cards and family updates, participating in a Christmas cantata, hosting a Christmas party, hosting a kid's Christmas party, participating in a cookie exchange, and making homemade food baskets for everybody I know. But here are the things that I did keep. Going to the mountains to cut down a Christmas tree. Cutting paper snowflakes to decorate that Christmas tree. Making gingerbread houses from scratch. So the, going to the mountains and getting our Christmas tree and also making our gingerbread houses, we've been doing with family friends for the last 15 years. And we get together each year do it with the same friends. It's so much fun. I make homemade cinnamon rolls for breakfast on Christmas morning. Actually, I make them the day before with another friend and we make them for this ministry that we're involved in, so we make a lot of cinnamon rolls, but they're all done and they're ready for us to eat together Christmas morning. 
filling up stockings. And actually our son Steven has taken over that role. So he's the Santa Claus in our house. I always want to cook a big turkey, mashed potatoes, gravy, that kind of stuff. I keep it pretty simple. And then we watch the extended edition of Lord of the Rings over the holiday break. It's our tradition. This is, this is, this is what our family does. So should we all keep traditions? Yes, I believe they're really important, but don't keep traditions just for tradition's sake. Talk to your family, sit down with them, write down all of the things that you do every Christmas, all of the traditions, all the chores, all the things that you feel like this is what Christmas involves and get everybody's opinion on them. Should we continue to do them? Should we stop? Should we do something different? Don't let traditions become like the, the dreaded fruit cake that everybody jokes about where everyone knows it's coming but nobody really wants it. Keep the traditions that you love. The last thing I wanna talk about is perfectionism. And I know this tends to be my soapbox <laughs> issue, but most of us have this idea to be the perfect person, the perfect woman, the per perfect caregiver, perfect spouse, perfect whatever. We have to do all this holiday stuff so perfectly. For some people, that means making five different types of pie from scratch for Christmas dinner. For other people, it's having a tree in every room, possibly different themes or colors or something, and it's decorations galore. I know people that would take a full week or two weeks to get their house decorated for Christmas. Their entire garage was lined with red and green boxes. There is nothing wrong with doing that if that's something that you absolutely enjoy. And if you don't enjoy it, or you're like me and the idea of having to put all that away again is so overwhelming, you'll consider it a feat if you get it packaged up and put away by March, then just, just don't do it. It really comes back to expectations again. We expect so much from the holidays themselves and we expect so much from us. Here's the truth. Even if we could create the absolutely most perfect holiday season, scenario, people, home, food, gifts, all of that, it's not going to transform our family. It's still gonna be difficult to raise children. There's still going to be disagreements within your relationships. The holidays themselves are not magic. So instead of expecting ourselves, our homes, our families, our holidays to be absolutely perfect, just start by saying no to those things that don't add value to your life. Change is uncomfortable at first. So if you decide this year you want to cut out sending Christmas cards, but you've sent Christmas cards for the last 32 years of your life, it's gonna be uncomfortable to not send Christmas cards. But if you've spent the majority of your November and Decembers dreading about, about addressing all of those Christmas cards and what to say in the family update, then allow yourself the freedom of not having that particular stress in your life this year. If you wanna see the true impact minimalism has had on our home and our life, you can check out what our home looks like when it gets messy right here. And if you're ready to participate with an army in your decluttering, I invite you to join my clutter-free army. Every week I send out a PDF with six 10-minute missions to help you declutter and decide what needs to stay and what needs to go. I'll put the link in the video description below.